And as you can see, if I zoom in or out, it's going to do so. But it's not going to reset itself, as you can see. So we need to change this. We're going to go here on the camera zoom update. Let's go right here and the camera zoom direction. It's going to be multiplied by our camera zoom dampener speed right here. And let's see what happens with this. And as you can see, it's going to smoothly reduce the camera zoom direction, which is great. Now, what else would you want to do? So if you go right here, let's clamp this new zoom value. So let's do right here. I can actually do it right here. Clamp this value. And the minimum to the zoom will be the camera zoom min, which we defined previously. And the maximum will be camera zoom out no. It'll be zoom max, I believe. Let's see if we type somewhere wrong. Yeah, I type in out. So let's hit fix here to max. And this should be fixed. So now we will only be able to move the camera on the Z axis on this orientation. Only by some values. And as you can see, now it's fixed. It. And this will control the zoom. But as you can see, it's moving the camera forwards. And why is that? Well, let me see something here first. I believe that I rotated the camera here, which in reality, I should be rotating the camera socket. So this is what it is what we are going to simulate. So I just changed the transform rotation here from the camera to zero, back to zero, and the camera socket to minus 45. So if you were on the same scene, you can see now it works as a zoom function. And what just happened was that previously the rotation was zero here and the camera was minus 45. And what this does is the camera was moving like this, which we saw. But once I reset the rotation or rotate the socket, now that camera position will have to obey its parent, which is the socket. So it's going to move like so. And I don't know if I can change the transform here to local, I think not. But now instead of moving the camera like so, it's going to move like so because of the camera socket axis, it's rotated. So that's why the same code now works. But as you saw, the, the units were too far, so I think the camera base is too high. The altitude of the camera here I'm going to be maybe four. Let's see how that behaves. Yeah, now it looks better. I think I can actually do three. Let us see. Yeah, three works all right. So we have a minimum and a maximum zoom, and we also have the movements which is great stuff. Now I want to add the automatic pen when you hover around the borders of the screen. And we'll be doing this by defining some margins. So let's go back here to our scripting. And let's create a new category here, which is going to be camera pen. And this is will be this automatic panning. It'll be considered a pen just like using the mouse. So let's create an export range here, which is going to be our margin. So it starts at zero, ends at 32, and step it by four. And here on the var camera automatic and margin. So this is going to be the margin which will be starting to move our window. So let's set it as an integer and let's give it a default value of 16. So I just want to say what step it means here. I type in here four, as you saw. So if I go to camera base and find the camera mistake there, if we find the, the camera automatic pen margin right here, because we set the step at four, the increments of the range will be four. So that is how you control the precision of the steps, I rather say, of the range here. 
So that is how you do use this parameter here on the range functionality. So let's save that and let's continue here. We also want another range here, which is going to be the speed at which you are going to move. So it starts at zero, ends at 20, and is stepped by 0 0.5 camera automatic band speed, which is going to be a float and be given the default value of 12. So now we have a speed, a margin, and I think that's all we need to make the camera automatic panning. So here's how we're going to do. Let's create a new function, which is going to be called camera automatic panning. Let's call pan. We will need be needing the delta because we are going to use this on the process function. And this function returns nothing, so it returns void. Next, I want to check if I can actually pan. So I can be simple later if we want. So we're going to create a new flag here. Camera can automatic pan. Let's give it as a bool value and be true. Now we can check here if camera can automatic pen. Rather, if camera can't automatic pen, we skip the function. First, we're going to need a viewport to grab the coordinates from the screen. So let's create a var viewport current. So let's just say current. It's going to be a viewport and it's going to get viewports. So now we need a pen direction for automatic panning. So let's create a new var here, then var pen direction, which is going to be a vector 2. And we're going to assign its default value as minus 1. And why minus 1? I'm going to start the function already to be panning on a specific direction. And if I detect something else, then I change the direction. So it is going to start at negative values. Next, we need the rectangle of the viewport. So let's get the viewport visible rectangle. And this is going to be a rectangle integer. Next, we are going to create a rectangle integer from the viewport current get visible let's just increase here so you can see get visible rect then we can add a new variable which is going to represent the size viewport size which is going to be a vector 2 integer and it's going to grab the size from that rectangle so viewport visible rectangle dot size And let's see, something was wrong here. A vector not found. So vector 2. Next, we want to get the current mouse position. So we can see if we need the zoom or not. So there, current mouse position. And this is going to be also a vector 2. And this is going to grab from the current viewport our mouse position. So get mouse position. There we go. And finally, we are going to be adding our margin, which is our camera automatic pen margin. But because this is such a long variable name, I'm going to be adding here as a shortcut. So it's going to make the code a little tighter. So var margin, which is almost a copy of that camera automatic pen margin and this is going to be a shortcut bar shortcuts so we can decrease the length of the code so next what we're going to do is detect the panning on the x-axis so let's do x pen and we almost will copy this on the y-axis so if 
and let's open brackets here. The current mouse position dot x is less than the margin. Then we know that the mouse is on the beginning of the screen. We are going to do this as a brackets or so we're going to detect if the mouse passes the margin on this border of the screen or on this border. So it's going to also need to detect if the current mouse position, X position, is higher than the viewport size X less the margin. So this is going to ask if the current mouse position is higher then the viewport size less the margin. So if the mouse passes through here. And this also I want in brackets. And there we go. So if one of those conditions is true, then I'm going to start doing stuff. So let us now detect if the mouse is on the right or left side of the screen. So if current mouse position dot x is higher than the viewport size divided by two its x position so we are going to take the mouse position and ask if its x position is higher than half of the screen so we know it's to move it to the right or to the left and if that is true then we simply are going to change the pen direction x position to one. So if you remember the first condition here, the first variable we gave the default value, it was minus one. So if we detect that the mouse is on the other side of the screen, we're going to change that direction to positive one. So later when we move the screen based on the pen direction, it's fixed. And just with this simple line, the algorithm should work. Now what we are going to do is move the camera on the X position. So here on the X pen, if we detected something from the margin, I'm going to place this here so it avoids confusion. So we are going to translate a vector tree, our camera base based on the pen direction. So the first value here is it's the x value. So we're going to say the viewport the pen direction x and we're going to multiply it by delta. Then we're going to multiply it by camera to our automatic pen speed. And I think that should do it. Next we only need to define the other values which is of the vector which is zero and zero. So using this right here, we can copy it now for the y axis. So let's copy this to the y. And I'm going to replace all the axis with y's, lazily so. Place those ones. OK. Now we are doing the same thing, but now on the y-axis. And this code should work. So it's going to translate. Oh, but we need to update this guy here. Because now it's not x, now it's y. So let's go here, in your by zero. So. It is Y axis on the screen, but we want to move the camera based on the Z axis because if we move it on the Y axis, it's going to increase the height of the camera, which is not what we want. Let me reset this. What we want is to use, if you are simulating the camera, we want the Y axis of the screen to be detected and move the camera forwards. So this code should work. Let's see if it does. Okay. And if I mouse close enough to the border. Okay, we never called the function. <laughs> I just realized. 
we define the function here, but we never call it. So let's go to the process here and add it. Now, if we run our scene, it should work. If we move to the right, it's going to move to the right. If we move to the left, okay, now it works. Yay! But now there's an issue. You notice if we zoom in our house, the speeds change. That's because the unit is the same, but the zoom changes. We would like to update the pen speed based on the zoom factor as well. So let's go here and see if we have something like this. So let's do a quick fix here. Let's create a new variable, which we will call the zoom factor. Zoom factor is going to be a float and it's going to take the camera position, Z position, and we are going to multiply it by 0 0.1 to reduce its value. So this factor is going to be taken here and multiplied on the translate operation. So I want to take into consideration the, the zoom factor as well not only the panning speed. Now, if you run this, you should see a speed here. And if you zoom in, out, and move, it will move much quicker. And this is actually desired because you want to have a bigger zoom range, we want to move it faster.